Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Welcome back, and I'm sure you were not expecting to hear from me so soon, but hey, that happens. Um, I have a lot of different shows going on and episodes that I'm in the process of recording for the Back to School series, and you know, there's just so much involved with Back to School that I really felt like I have so much that I need to get it out, especially because I feel like if I miss something or I wait too long, many will have started back to school and maybe this won't help you as much. I mean, it might. I think all of this information is really good information for whatever time of the school year, but especially the beginning of the school year when it is such uh, an interesting time because I feel like, oh, there's so many unknowns, right? So the feeling at the beginning of the school year is such a different feeling. And so it just kind of requires a little special attention called to it. So I I thought, you know, there are going to be moments when I have additional episodes that don't, you know, that I want to get out before Sunday. So you might want to expect that that could happen. And also I have other thoughts about the show, but I'll share also, I don't know what I'm going to call this, but there are, especially now that I'm back at school, I have returned as of today, which I am recording it. When you hear this, it will not, it will have passed, but today's Thursday, August 3rd. Today's my first day back. And I just realized how many more ideas I'm going to have and topics that I want to discuss because of the authentic things that are happening at my school. And um, I'm not going to be talking to you about my school personally but things that are brought up obviously gives me the idea and think that oh gosh this is you know content is really happening at the school discussions that we're having Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to call that but when something like that happens and it doesn't necessarily fall into the series I don't want to wait until an appropriate time that it might fall into an appropriate series I think that it will be very thought worthy which is actually what I'm thinking to possibly call those segments so you might see some episodes pop up in between the normal Sunday series and uh, that's gonna you know either be because there was a topic that I felt that was pressing that couldn't necessarily wait until Sunday or it was a topic that came up that doesn't necessarily fall within the the Sunday the actual Sunday series whatever series we're working on at that time but very beneficial and thought worthy. So I don't know if you have some ideas for what to call that. I have a whole list. So I want to go ahead and jump into uh, today's episode. So I am back. I'm back at school and it's exciting and it was so good to be back and see everyone. And I just I have a whole list of topic ideas that came out of this first date. But there is something that really this actually my idea for this came out of an interview on this past week I had my very first experience as an interviewee on a guest podcast show it's actually um, the the podcast show is called planning period podcast and I will include a link but it's Brad Schreffler's podcast show and he invited me to be a guest on the show and at one point in his episode he started talking about you know his experience going back I think he returned this past Monday but you know he was just asking about how personally how do I handle or do I have any suggestions or ideas about you know sometimes you can be greeted with 
ideas of, oh, we really want to try this, but then, you know, you get maybe some difficulties in moving forward because, you know, maybe some people feel that it's difficult to move forward or they don't know how or they don't have all the answers. So it can become, you know, a negative experience sometimes. So you might experience some teachers who are negative about whatever project or or proposal or, or whatever it is. So I don't have the answer, but I did have some ideas or at least one idea. And that kind of was brought up today, the idea of, you know, being positive and how do we with our stress and the hard work that we are doing because it is hard work and it is meaningful work but how do we keep that positivity going and and you know maybe you can argue that you can't always and i would agree i think that's fair but those two things are really what gave me the idea and i i thought you know what i want to do I think I think it's beneficial if we all begin our school year thinking about those things so I'm going to share that with you just a few what I hope will be little nuggets of ideas or things that you can take to your school so I just I want to begin with that idea of keeping things positive now I want you to keep in mind I understand we cannot be positive 100% of the time. Now, even though I am someone who, and if you've been listening and if you've listened to my prior episodes, you know that I am very into positive psychology. So I'm very into being as positive as I possibly can. Uh, and of course, the idea with positive psychology is you're, it doesn't actually mean that you're happy 100% of the time, but really that you are you are engaging in strategies and practices that help keep you mentally healthy and happy, happy being content. So while I don't think we're going to be happy 100% of the time, we know from our own experiences, not possible, not going to happen. Um, we can definitely find ways that help us and help others to just, you know, keep things as positive as possible. So the first thing that I want to share, if we're thinking about how, how do we create this positivity or how do I help spread it or how do I maintain it? Uh, number one, I, I want you to just be grateful. Yes, I know we hear that all the time. Gratitude and gratitude matters, but it truly does. And when we think about all the things that we do have, so maybe if you're entering the new school year and, you know, maybe you're not ready to come back and you're feeling a little, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. I think that's fair. We have all been there and we, you know, sometimes we're ready to go back like me right now. Um, Sometimes we're not. And that's okay. It's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. But we want to know that number one, how fortunate are we that we are employed? We have jobs. How many people are out there who would love to have an income and who don't? So number one, let's be grateful that we have a job to go to every day. That is a good thing. That is to be celebrated. We have an income and we're not going to get into teacher's income. That has no place in today's episode, but we have an income. So we have an income that contributes to everything else that we have because now not saying money is everything because I don't think, uh, I don't think that at all, but, um, money is something because in the society that we function in, you cannot get food without money, mostly. I mean, unless you have a garden and you're growing your food, and but I mean, most of us are not doing that. Some of us are. Some of us are growing our own fruits and vegetables, and I think that's great. Some of us have um, chickens, and I think that's excellent, but for most of us, we're not producing our own food. So we need money for that. Um, we need that for shelter. We need it for, you know, our bo- most basic needs. So we have that. 
that's so number one let's be just very grateful to think about just keep in mind that we have a job now that doesn't mean if someone comes to you and says hey i'm really bummed out because this or that is going on you probably don't want to come at them with well at least you have a job so there's that um, obviously we want to be compassionate and we want to be empathetic towards others and we want to be good listeners, right? That's what we, I think, should strive to do is listen, but listen to understand and listen to really hear what the other person is saying. But I'm just saying within our own selves, just know that we are in a very fortunate circumstance to be employed. Um, I would also say that this specific profession, the profession of being an educator, Honestly, I can't think of anything better. And maybe that's because I am so in love with what I do, but that's because I find so much meaning in what I do. As I have said before, I know this is cheesy. I know I'm cheesy. I apologize for all the cheese, but um, I really feel like I'm making a difference. I do what I do because I truly am trying to make the world a better place place. So I, I do it through teaching, you know, really big ideas. And yeah, we're doing it through learning, reading and writing and math and all those great things that we do. But at the end of the day, it's really so that those students can go into the world and have a positive impact. So yeah, I find my work very meaningful. And that's another thing that we can be grateful for. We have very, we have a very meaningful profession. We, we have the ability to impact lives, lives of our students, lives of their parents, and then with our colleagues. And how many people can say that? How many people can say that? I know there are other meaningful careers out there. I'm not trying to say that this is the only way to make a difference, but it's it's not, but it's certainly one way to make a difference. So, you know, we have very meaningful jobs and I think we can't undervalue that. We have to understand that we're so very fortunate to be in the position that we are in and that again that is to be celebrated and certainly you know something to be honored so yeah i think as we're, we're thinking about how to keep things positive how to help others to be positive uh one thing that i had said on the planning um planning period podcast with brad was i i know that we're we are often faced with those obstacles of like uh, let me give you an example we just revamped our reaper cards and you know when you make major changes you're going to be faced with difficulties and challenges no doubt those arrive um and you know those are the realities we can't we really can't get away from that but what we do have control over is the way that we react to those challenges we have we have a lot of control over that and you know i think that we can also positively or negatively influence others when we come and are faced with those challenges so i explained to brad that one of the things that i do try to do and and maybe i'm not always successful at this but i think if we can help to create an environment where people understand that you know it's okay if we don't have a perfect right now like with our report card it wasn't perfect in fact we're going back and we we, in fact, that was one of the things we talked about in our, our grade level leader meeting today was that, you know, we're, we have to um, go ahead and finish up our changes that we had started last year because, no, it wasn't a perfect version of a report card, but it was much improved. So let's celebrate the improvements and we still have a little bit of work to do so we're going to continue that but if we can remind each other that you know what it's okay if it wasn't perfect it's okay because we can improve it and it's okay if we make mistakes we're going to learn from that i really feel like a lot of times when we're 
we're challenged with these things. We we put the pressure on ourselves to be like, oh, it's got to be perfect on day one. I have to have this. I have to have all the answers immediately. That we start feeling those pressures that really mostly we are putting on ourselves, and that that's when it begins to feel overwhelming, and that's when moving forward becomes very difficult because we we feel weighted down with all of those concerns. So if we can just remind each other, remind ourselves, and then help re- remind each other that yeah, um, if we, we're, we probably are not going to have all the answers. That's okay. Not to throw in the idea of growth mindset, if you're tired of hearing that term thrown, thrown around. But if we can, you know, not just in our classrooms, do we want to create an environment where it's okay to take risks? It's okay to make a mistake. And it's okay that you're going to be vulnerable at times. And other students are going to maybe see you make mistakes, but that's okay to set up that same environment at our school and with our colleagues. And it's got to start with us, you know, because there's going to be some negativity, but be that reminder. And hopefully when you can spread that kind of message and encouragement, that's going to influence the people around you. And maybe they're going to help spread that because what we want to avoid is the negativity from spreading out because that spreads so quickly and it is so toxic. So that goes on to my third point, which is I think we really want to start this new school year by shielding ourselves from the negativity because there's always negativity there is always gossip that is going that's part to probably anything and anywhere that we are right but it it, does it serve a, a purpose for us no it does not so instead of participating in negativity and in gossip I would encourage everyone to just kind of back away and it doesn't have to be done in a rude way but just don't participate in it and just you know just shield yourself if you know that there is a toxic area you just you don't go to that area so we're going to go in and start this new school year positive we're going to try our best to spread positivity and encourage each other's and let them know that yeah we're going to make mistakes because we're human and that's what humans do and we're going to learn from that we're going to improve but it's okay those things are okay we want to create that kind of environment where we feel safe in doing that and then shield ourselves from the negativity and from anything that is toxic and just not participate in it you know don't you don't want to be part of the vein in which that toxicity flows through. You don't want to be part of it because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. I don't feel good really even. It it makes me feel sad actually whenever I felt like I hear a lot of negative things. Now again, like I say, I know there are negative things um, but I prefer to look at things through the through the lens of, okay, so this isn't working quite yet or right now in its state or the way that things are. So let's look at how we can improve it. What are some changes we can make? And then even if you can look at what is working in the immediate situation, I mean, I don't think everything, uh, even something that's not working, it can't usually is not 100% total fail. Sometimes that might be the case, but try to find what is good about that situation and then how you can be part of a positive change instead of looking at it through a lens that sees only the bad things because it just, it doesn't feel good. And when you're part of spreading that, it, you know, it just, it just creates a, a t- that toxicity. It's like a chain and it gets passed down. And is that the kind of school environment that we want to walk into every day? Of course not. And this is not about having good days or bad days because we will. We, we want to protect ourselves and we don't want to be part of the, the 
problem of spreading negativity. It's something we have to be very careful about. The next thing that I want to talk about is something that I don't remember where I heard this from. I know it's a podcast uh, and I would definitely give credit if I could remember where exactly I heard it from, but I remember hearing um, someone speak on a podcast about always assuming the best from others. And I don't know, when I heard it, I just felt like it was so powerful because it's true. And it's a message that I try to remember myself now. And, and again, I'm not, I don't always succeed at that, but it is such a great message. If we always assume the best of others, then it's going to help help us to stay calm and help us to not overreact to things or at least, you know, think things through instead of just initially assuming that the person had bad intentions. So when, when would this be relevant? I mean, it would almost be relevant in any uncomfortable situation where possibly the, it's, you know, the person's meaning is maybe a little obscure. So let's say you receive an email from a colleague. And uh, one of my friends always reminds me that I should not try to read tones in emails because it's so very difficult and it's true. But it's also very difficult to not read tones in emails. But I'm always reminding myself. So this kind of goes with it, assuming the best. So if I'm, if I have received an email and I I think I detect a tone, but I'm not really sure. I uh, have been trying really hard to remember that message that I heard a while ago, which was always assume the best. So if I assume the best, then I'm going to say, okay, maybe there was not actually a tone in that email. So I'm going to assume that there was. I'm going to assume that's the way I'm reading into it. And um, when we keep this message at the forefront of our interactions, it so helps us because I think often we have a tendency to overreact. I, I know I do when I have... A, a situation where I'm not, and I don't mean I overact because I don't really don't over, I'm very careful in my um, actions. So I don't maybe overreact in my actions, but I might have a tendency to build something up in my mind and think, oh, that person is really upset for whatever reason. And maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's just a case of that I don't fully understand the situation or don't understand all the factors involved. So we want to, instead of just jumping to conclusions, and no, this is not easy, I struggle with this, and I am sincerely interested in pursuing the idea of stopping and pausing when something happens, and I probably won't be perfect at it, but I'm going to continue with this but just stopping myself, pausing, and assuming that the person had the best intentions. I have done this successfully, not every time, because if I don't remind myself to stop and pause, then I I start, like I said, I start building it up in my mind and maybe have created this thing that that's not even what it was ever. Um, I definitely, if you put yourself into, I think with our, our partners or spouses, we, I think it's a very easy to build things up. So if you can even just imagine a scenario where this might happen and you've created something where maybe that was not the intention at all, uh, you can, you can maybe get a clearer picture, but, um, yeah, I think I, I have successfully used this strategy, if you can call it a strategy, um, where I'm maybe in a, for me, I feel like a lot of these things can happen through email because you don't necessarily, the person hasn't necessarily had time to email everything. You only have part of the story or sometimes when it is something that's been relayed to you by someone else, you you only know part of the facts and you're getting it through filtered through someone else. So you're getting their story, you're getting their filter 
so that's when I have found myself successfully stopping and pausing in my mind and assuming the best of that person, assuming that that person had the best of intentions. And I can't tell you how helpful this has been because when you assume the best, you're not going to just immediately jump into a situation where, okay, I'm immediately going into defense mode or I'm immediately becoming upset because it's far too easy to do that when the situation is not well understood. So this can save us a lot of just unnecessary arguments or issues with colleagues when we just stop and we say, you know what, they probably had the best intention instead of immediately assuming that they had the worst of intentions. And why we run around assuming everyone has the worst of intentions, I don't know. I don't know. I think most of us probably have good intentions. Once in a while, maybe that is not the case, but if we can just remind ourselves that, yeah, um, that person probably meant well, and if needed, then you take the time to investigate or ask more questions or get the story from the actual person and talk it over, that's going to be more beneficial and helpful and positive. And that leads me into... The very next point, which is communication. It is so important that we are keeping really good communication with our colleagues. And, you know, I have learned this because, I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert on this, um, but I just want to say that I have definitely learned that sometimes we forget to include others and communicate with others and it's not maybe necessarily because we don't care about the person but uh, we have maybe just in our the busyness of our day failed to communicate something to someone else and you know if you're the person who's not being communicated with it can feel bad it can feel like you're being left out it can feel like you know that person doesn't think about me when when I know when when I've been in that situation and have been the offender, not you know with not not intentionally and definitely not wanting to do that, it's really just been because um, you know you get really caught up in the busyness of your day, and so we want to communicate, especially with those who with whom we're working directly, and who we need to report things for whatever that might be. You might have a co-teacher, you might have um, a, um, a support service teacher, someone who comes in and works with your students, What, whatever it is, making sure that we're communicating and just keeping those other colleagues included in important decisions and up to date on whatever is necessary and that pertains to our students probably and then it might be other things that might just pertain to them but but the most obvious thing is things that are going to pertain to our students that we need to communicate about and then the other type of communication is you know we cannot avoid that conflicts are going to arise because of course they're going to we're going to have things that we disagree with others on we're going to have maybe situations that something feels uncomfortable or it feels awkward and we definitely want to communicate those things as well in a very respectful and kind manner but we want to you don't want to just continue a situation that feels uncomfortable but direct communication is key because you know even though sometimes it's difficult to have those conversations it is oftentimes very necessary especially if you're going to work something out there's something happening and you know there's really it's not going to resolve on its own because that's not the way that most issues do resolve usually there there's got to be some some way that we're dealing with it so uh, yeah we have to to have those communication and I think if we can 
keep it positive and, and respectful, then, you know, that's the way that we can overcome those challenges. But, you know, even though it's difficult, even though it feels challenging, you know, there are some conversations that need to be had and we want to remember to do that and just, you know, it is difficult, but we've, we've got to do it. And that's going to definitely contribute to a healthy relationship with our colleagues and our coworkers. And if we're, if we have a healthy relationship that automatically is going to trickle down to the students because it's contributing to the overall environment and that climate that we have in our classroom and overall at the school. So open communication is definitely key, huge, hugely important. Then the very last point that I want to make is really recognizing the value of each and every person. Um, This is huge because I feel like, and I'm not saying that we go around devaluing anyone. I don't think so at all. But, But I mean really being conscious of the value that each person brings because we all have, you know, we have these areas that maybe we do have an an area of expertise that someone else doesn't have and that other person is going to have an area of expertise or experience that I don't have. So we want to understand and recognize that every single person is has something to offer. I mean, number one, they're human. So just that very fact, we want to respect all humans, and I would say all living creatures, but uh, just number one, we want to respect them just because of the fact that they're human. And um, yeah, they bring value, they bring worth, they're bringing, even if it's someone who is coming in his or her very first year of school, there's value in that. That person is coming with whatever is the most recent in education. Uh, so, you know, we want to value that and that person's going to have his or her own authentic opinions and definitely coming up with some experience, even like I said, if, even if it's a first year teacher, there's some experience that that person has had that is going to be valuable. So I think we it's really important that we need to respect each other and recognize that every single person has value and they are bringing something to the table. And I want to extend that to all staff at the school. I am of the mind that there is no person better above or below anyone else. I don't subscribe to that notion. Um, Even the person who works as a, you know, a trash collector, that's a very necessary job, right? I mean, we don't want a society that has trash spilling out. So I think we really need to recognize that everyone, regardless of their position, is contributing to our overall success as a school. So that means our janitors, that means our cafeteria staff, that means um, everyone, that that means those who are working grounds, those who who are working in the office, every person is contributing to the school. That means that every person is so vital and it's worthy of respect and we really need to recognize that and you know when we do our unit our myself unit um it it's it starts with me right so it starts with understanding who i am but the overarching bigger idea of this is understanding your place in the world and that you're connected to others and part of that is knowing that others also have a vital role in in your immediate um, place and in your bigger geographical world. We're all connected in, in some way. We're all connected and we're all neighbors in the in the greater sense because I necessarily should be concerned about not just those at my school, not just those in my city, not just those in my state or country, but you know, what about my 
those neighboring countries? What about even those who are maybe continents apart from me, but they still matter and I am necessarily concerned about them. And that's what we teach in our our unit and the myself unit is that, you know, it starts with the very immediate me who I am, but it, it then expands out into that, you know, we, our place in this world is that we're really, we're all connected and we're all, we're all in this together. So we really need to be concerned with each other and others. And that um, includes looking at, you know, all the different roles that those in our community, so community workers, how, what they, what they are contributing and how important that is and just, you know, a general respect for others and what they're doing. So we need to do that as well. We need to recognize that everyone has a place and everyone has value. They all, every person has value. They're bringing something to the table and they're contributing to the overall success of our school. And that needs to be recognized. That's important. And that really ends the different points that I wanted to make in terms of how we can start the school year right. So let me just kind of go over that very quickly and just say again what those six points were. So as we begin the new school year, we want to keep these things in mind. We want to be grateful, number one. Number two, we want to just kind of help to contribute and create an environment where we feel safe making mistakes and we know that things are not going to be perfect initially. We're going to struggle. Uh, we're going to, you know, not have all the answers immediately, but that's okay. Let's give our, ourselves uh, a little slack here and know that we're going to work together to figure it out. And that's okay. Number three, refrain from negativity and gossip. Number four, assume the best of others. Number five, communicate with colleagues. And number six, recognize each other's values because we all have value. So I'm going to go ahead and and end it on that note. I wish you all a wonderful beginning to your school year and I hope you can take something away. If so, I'd love to hear from you and let me know, did any of this help you? Or maybe you have a few points to add on to the list. I'd love to hear from you. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch our show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L I B S Y N.com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.